they continue to harass you, ask them, are you challenging me to a fight? So psychologically, the bully has a choice to make. Either yes, in which case you use what you know, or if he says most of the time he'll say no, it's de-escalated. But you can only ask that question if you know the answer is yes, then you can handle it. Uh. Women can't handle it if they're in an inner city and a man is on PCP. Sports are sort of allegorical, analogous for war, right? In a lot of ways. It's mm -hmm. a way of sort of competing without mm -hmm. killing each other. So take wrestling, where we know it's not even remotely competitive. Mm -hmm. Now apply killing. We need the most effective fighting force possible, just like I wouldn't send out a woman, for example, to wrestle Kale Sanderson. Uh, I wouldn't send a woman who can't do a pull-up, and that's the majority of female recruits in the military. I would not send her out to war. She doesn't lose a match. She loses her life, and so does the guy next to her relying on her. I think it's important, more important than diversity. My, again, I'm gonna bring it back to the standard point. I think that's an issue with the standards we have in the military, in the police force. I think the standards aren't high enough. Again, I, I agree. we can argue that there is a biological difference, but again, you're also talking about people have guns, they have a lot of technological advancements. Today's military technologically is off the charts. Like it is crazy how much money we put into the military every single day, technologically advancing ourselves. Sure. So. I actually agree with the statement you just made. I think it's very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Where you said, for example, guns, advancement, let's just say in firearms. Mm -hmm. um, that does equalize the playing field, mm -hmm. right? In a lot of ways. Okay, so it's a perfect example. For the same reason I support women, being able to carry firearms, and I actually support them carrying firearms because uh, it's the only way to be stronger than a man. It's mm -hmm. a mechanical advantage, right? Yes, we have advances in firearms. It's still the only way that a woman can overpower a strong man. Flip side of that coin, the police force, a woman will have to use a firearm. Okay. She'll have to use a weapon because she can't physically subdue a man. And that I don't believe is something where you talk about de-escalation. If you have to go to your tool belt because you cannot physically restrain a 250 pound man on PCP. But do you that's not always a good thing. have to? Because I'm saying between men and women, I'm saying in the police force in general, like, I don't remember the exact like number, so I can't really quote on this, but I know for a fact that there is not enough training on de escalation. Like, they barely do any training on it at all. I agree with the statement that. I agree women with you, they should are, train that robustly. Okay. I agree that. You're saying like men and women, like women are physically smaller, we are biologically different. But I'm saying in general, you can't put the whole argument on just women rather than putting it on a structural problem. Right, and it's I believe the structural problem is because women. of the matriarchy and the problem with feminism trying to lower standards to accommodate women. But can't you say it's also sexism because it's the idea that, like I was saying before, like you were talking about in the military how a lot of it is, um, there's a lot of things given to women and it's like the men should be, um, we're talking about like, for example, mental health, for example, and we were saying that like... Um, women are more likely to uh, PTSD, be discharged. But it's also because men aren't treated as seriously for it because it's like... That, that could be true. It's an inference, like, but mm -hmm. I, I think your inference might be correct. Yeah. Yes. That could also be, instead of saying because of feminists, it could also be because of sexism. Towards men? Mm-hmm. You may be correct on that. I think it's probably a little column A, a little column B. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have quite a lot of data that shows that men tend to perform better under high compression stress scenarios than mm -hmm. women in general. There are always exceptions to the rule. Mm -hmm. um, and it tends to be more traumatic for women. Mm -hmm. And then especially when you combine, right, uh, sort of uh, being on the receiving end of a traumatic injury in the military. Same thing in the police force. Um, but you mentioned de-escalation. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you, do, you wrestle. Mm -hmm. So you have some understanding of, uh, I would say, controlling or subduing the human body, right? That's what sure. all grappling arts sure. are, whether it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, Judo. Um, I do believe that should be trained in the police force mm -hmm. so that you don't have to use a weapon. I think that we need higher standards, as a matter of fact. I think every member of the police should have basic grappling capabilities so that they don't have to, for example, mm -hmm. grab their gun or grab mm -hmm. their taser. Now, de escalation. I agree with you, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Here's what I would argue is the reality of de escalation. You can only de-escalate if you have the nuclear option. What do I mean? You can't de-escalate with a large, strong, likely inebriated man who doesn't want to go back to prison if he sees a small, weak woman trying to de-escalate. He knows that he has a trump card and he can attack you. Mm -hmm. Statistically, it happens a lot. De-escalation can only take place with formidable capability. And women don't have that physically. As a general rule, not all women, and certainly most of the women in our police force today. For me, okay, 
I'm not disagreeing with your statement. I actually kind of agree with your statement. My only thing is, again, like I said, for de-escalation, when I think of de-escalation, I think of more like, you know, like um, physical therapy. You know how we learn about the cognitive, whatever. Like, um, cognitive you've ever, you've ever, yeah, you've ever heard about like you've ever um, taken a psycho psychology class. Sure. Okay. And they teach us about like different things about the human like behavior and things like that. I feel like in the way I think about it is I feel like cops should be taught that because they should be taught how to behave and be like not behave, but you know how to like. No, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. But. I think it's a very important component of the job, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's a very important component to be able to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, most police civilian interactions, mm -hmm. most of them are not violent. Yeah. But every single police officer, male or female, mm -hmm. will have many violent interactions throughout their mm -hmm. career. And it only takes one. And if you're not physically up to the task, mm -hmm. and the women in our police force, the vast majority are not, not all of them, mm -hmm. but the vast majority are not, that's a problem. If I can, let me give you, this is, we've talked about the empirical and anecdotal story. Okay. And uh, I come from a background, I've done judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so we okay. don't really have wrestling in Canada, I think okay. it's uh, Oh, Canadian but, wrestling, sorry. I know, it's not very good, yeah. There's the Olympic team, and like George St. and then everyone else. There aren't very, it doesn't happen in high school. Uh, but now I'm a new father, and um, I've also coached kids. Okay. Sure. And here's a problem too. We have a lot of moms, for example, who when they have sons, uh, they will tell them if they're dealing with a bully, and I had this, they say, you walk up to him and you tell him that he better stop. You know, he needs to stop or else. Or you tell him that he needs to stop, that this is, you know, he's just doing it because he feels bad about himself. In other words, whatever techniques that are often told to young boys, uh, it doesn't work if the bully knows he can kick your ass. That happened to me when I was young. I said, well, you know, stop, this is wrong. You need to stop doing this. Well, he said, what? And kicked my ass. Only once I was able to physically defend myself could I de-escalate the situation. And then at that point I could say, look, do you really want to go this route? And that's what we actually teach children. Mm -hmm. We teach children, we teach them jujitsu. The Gracies actually do this. I mean, it's important we teach the psychology. We say, avoid it. And then if they continue to harass you, ask them, are you challenging me to a fight? So psychologically, the bully has a choice to make. Either yes, in which case you use what you know. Or if he says most of the time he'll say no, it's de-escalated. But you can only ask that question if you know the answer is yes, then you can handle it. Uh. Women can't handle it if they're in an inner city and a man is on PCP. You can't de-escalate from a position of weakness. Does that make, does that make sense? Kind of. My... If we didn't have nukes and we told Russia, you know, we told Russia to stop it. They care? No. No, exactly. So it does matter. You can only have peace through strength, de-escalation, if they know that when push comes to shove, there are consequences. Um, and the statistics are really scary. Women, as far as being on the receiving end of violent attacks when they're police officers. It's not good. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see women getting hurt because of some diversity quota. I don't think that's a good thing for women, and I don't think it's a good thing for the guy next to her. My thing is, I was talking to him, I'm working that guy went, but I was talking about something, and we were talking about how um, police need to be reached trained we get trained they get trained once and then they're they go for the job men too I feel like over time he was giving the example it wasn't me he was saying like police officers gets trained out of the job freshly trained whatever physically built whatever years go by he gets fat he gets slow you know he doesn't get retrained the training basically just leaves his head I feel like if you're talking about like that it's that's it's terrible. honestly the same. It's like, I don't feel like... No, I agree. I agree. I think that's terrible. I just don't think that the solution is a reverse nirvana fallacy of, well, then let's just lower the standards for everyone. I think we need to raise it. I think we're both agreeing. We need to raise the standards. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.